This lecture deals with NFA with epsilon transition or also termed as epsilon NFA. So if a finite automata is allowed to have allowed to take transition from one state to another without consuming an input symbol, then you can call that finite automata as epsilon NFA. So without consuming anything, this finite automata is allowed to take a transition or change state from one to another. So let us consider an example. From Q0 without consuming anything, it goes to state Q1. So this is what you meant by epsilon transition. From Q1 without consuming anything, assume that it's going to state Q2. So let the let the existence of transition 0, 1, 0. So can you can you recognize or identify the language recognized by this machine, this model? So here from Q0 it can consume any number of zeros. So let us write the language from Q0 it can consume n number of or can consume p number of zeros consume p number of zeros then without consuming anything go to state q1 and from q1 it can consume some q number of ones it can consume some q number of ones and from here it get it will it without consuming anything it can go to q2 and proceeding in q2 it can consume some r number of zeros so it can consume zero strings of the form 0 raised to p 1 raised to q 0 raised to r such that so what about the what about the limit of p q and r from here it can consume p number of zeros so p could be zero also in the sense without consuming this zero taking this path it can go to q1 without consuming anything so we can say that p is greater than or equal to zero and again from q1 once after reaching q1 it can consume this one or can take this path or without taking this path you can it can go to q2 so Q is also greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, R is also greater than or equal to 0. So if P, Q, R turn tends to 0, then the resultant string will be epsilon. That is 0 number of zeros followed by 0 number of 1s followed by 0 number of zeros. So resultant string will be epsilon. So verify whether this machine accepts epsilon. Without consuming anything, it will go to Q1 from start state. From Q1, without consuming anything, it will go to state Q2. So, result is null string. Now, uh, such a model is termed as epsilon NFA. That is, finite automata that allows epsilon transition. Now, let us formally define epsilon NFA. Epsilon NFA is formally defined as formally defined as M equal to the same phi tuple representation, same as that of uh, DF and NFA, Q sigma delta Q zero F where what about Q? Q is the non-empty finite set of states Sigma is the non-empty finite set of input symbols or alphabets 
delta is the transition function that maps from mapping is very important that maps from q cross sigma so if you consider uh, epsilon and fa in addition to the set of alphabets there will be epsilon also since it takes epsilon transition so q cross sigma union epsilon to 2 raised to q because it's an nfa then q0 is the start state start state or initial state that belongs to set of states and f is the known on the finite set of final states so if you consider this formal definition the representation is exactly same as that of uh, the that of dfa and nfa the only difference is in the transition function so in the case of uh, dfa transition actually maps from q cross sigma to q in the case of nfa transition actually maps from q cross sigma to 2 raised to q if you consider epsilon and fa in addition to the set of alphabets you have to consider one more symbol one more input symbol that is null symbol so this is the formal definition now <coughs> let me introduce uh, one terminology that is epsilon closure let us consider the same transition diagram q0 q1 q2 so here it is 0 1 0 so epsilon closure is actually defined for each and every state so what about epsilon closure of q0 what about epsilon closure of so epsilon closure c l o s c u r closure epsilon closure of q1 now what about epsilon closure of q2 so epsilon closure of a particular state is the uh, is a set that contains is the set of states that are reachable from that particular state through epsilon transitions so i will repeat once more epsilon closure of q contains set or is the set of states that are reachable from q through epsilon transitions including q <coughs> let us consider q0 what about epsilon closure of q0 from q0 anyway if you consider this point epsilon closure of q contains q itself so epsilon closure of q0 contains q0 it includes that state also and the set of states that are reachable from q0 through epsilon transitions so from q0 through epsilon transition can go to q1 now from q0 through this epsilon transition it will go to q1 and through this epsilon transition it will go to q2 so without consuming anything from q0 it can go to q1 and q2 for that reason q1 and q2 belongs to epsilon closure of q0 now what about epsilon closure of q1 epsilon closure of q1 is anyway q1 will be a member and from q1 without consuming anything it can go to q2 now what about epsilon closure of q2 q2 and that is what we mean by epsilon closure 
now what do you, uh, how will you define language accepted by epsilon and fa language accepted by epsilon and fa or recognized by epsilon and fa is this contains set of strings accepted by epsilon and fa so starting from the start state by consuming the input string if it goes to final state through some path then that string is said to be accepted so all those th strings together form the language recognized by epsilon and fa then uh, if you consider epsilon and fa and nfa both are equivalent in terms of power because we can eliminate epsilon transition from a given nfa so why epsilon and fa if you consider these machines that is models these models dfa <coughs> nfa epsilon and fa from the design point of view it is difficult to design nfa as compared i mean uh, dfa as compared to nfa and if you consider nfa and epsilon and fa it is difficult to de design nfa as compared to epsilon and fa so this one is very much easier to design as compared to this one and this is easier as compared to this one but all the three are equivalent in terms of power in the sense if you take an epsilon and fa there will be an equivalent dfa or if you take nfa there will be an equivalent dfa so from the design point of view if you are asked to uh, design a finite automata for a particular language rather than directly designing uh, dfa if it is uh, very hard to design dfa you just design epsilon and fa once after designing epsilon and fa you can eliminate epsilon transition and convert it into equivalent dfa so that is the relevance of epsilon and fa that's it